Hello everybody, today we'll be retaking an old project pressed up. This one, the navigation was implemented with navigation view for the sidebar view in the iPad and the typical push navigation in the iPhone. We're going to change that to use navigation stack and navigation split view that were introduced recently. Okay, first off, a brief review of what we have right now. We have a push navigation here in the categories view, also in the favorites. When we select a restaurant, we push to that. On the iPad, we have triple column. We have on the center restaurants, we select a restaurant, it's displayed in the right. On the sidebar, we have the restaurants and profile tab, and we can drag and drop uh, favorites. So that's pretty much it. So that's the implementation we have right now. Let's see if we can achieve the same implementation with navigation stack and navigation split view. Okay, so in our REST app app, what we have is our main view. It depends on if it's an iPhone or an iPad. Let's start with the iPhone. So the top bar view, we're gonna change this navigation view for a navigation stack. Here, let's change it. And let's see what else. Oh, oh, and we have a warning. This is only available in iOS 16 or newer. We have to change some configuration in the target. And there we go, build successful. So now let's go into our categories view to see what changes we have to execute now that we're in a navigation stack. So here we have our restaurant row that has inside the navigation link. When we tap on it, it takes us to a destination, this restaurant view. So let's change this. Let's use a new implementation of navigation link. And we don't need this empty view. The restaurant row is going to be the content of this navigation link. Here we have the different implementations of navigation link. The one that we're using is above the selected, the value and label. The only change we need here is instead of the destination, we add a value and the value is not going to be the restaurant view. It's going to be the restaurant. And let's try building here. If you saw the auto completion, the placeholder there required that restaurant conforms to different protocols, the codable, codable and hashable, I think it was. Uh, it's a good thing our restaurant already confirms to that, which is why we're not getting any issues from the compiler. Now, since we remove the destination from the navigation link, how will the navigation stack know what view to use for this restaurant? That comes in the form of this modifier, the navigation destination. So when we pass in a value to the path of restaurant, of type restaurant, what we're gonna do is construct the view here. So here we just specify that for a restaurant, we use restaurant view. Let's see what we have right now. So we have our restaurants, let's tap on a row and we get pushed to a restaurant view. Pretty easy, no? We can push to other parts or oh, we have also the context menu. But yeah, we can push to other restaurants, all good for now. Let's do a little bit of cleanup here. We don't need a C stack with a restaurant row and the navigation link with an empty view. We can have the restaurant row in the navigation link. And we have exactly the same behavior as we had before. Now that we have categories out of the way, we need to do the same thing in our favorite view. So let's embed this in a navigation stack and change the navigation link to the new version where we specify the value and the view with a modifier. Okay, we go to favorites, we tap and, oh, we're getting a warning. Well, this is good, this is, warning you will see in the console when you don't have a navigation specified for that value so a restaurant doesn't have a navigation specified for this navigation stack my guess is that i place the modifier on the wrong row ah uh, yes the modifier doesn't go 
in the navigation stack, it should be in the view embedded inside of the navigation stack. Try running, try again, tap on favorite, and no warning, and we do get our push to our view. Now, this implementation also has a modifier to handle deep links, which is on open URL. So we have a specified scheme and the idea of the restaurant, we can present our restaurant. Let's see how that goes. So we use xurun, this is a command line to trigger a deep link and notice that we're presenting a restaurant. This was due to a previous limitation before for navigation link where if it, the view wasn't visible, here it is collapsing that list, we couldn't push to it. Now, things are different. With navigation stack, we can actually programmatically push a view in Swift UI. Our current implementation presents our restaurant uh, with these two state variables. One is the restaurant that we get, and the other one is if it is presenting a restaurant to, for the sheet modifier. So we're gonna change that. Instead, what we're gonna have is a path. That's an array of restaurants. Now, why are we doing this as an array? And by the way, we're only presenting one restaurant in this case. Because navigation stack, just like navigation link using values, has a, an array of these values. So here we have one of the values that you can pass in the initializer. We're going to pass our path. And this path is the one that we're going to programmatically change to push this view. Sorry about that, got a little bit confused. We're actually handling the deep link inside our categories view mode. Here we also have a state for each presenting the restaurant. And we're getting our deep link handling through the restaurant app view model. This is a view model that's provided by the app and is passed as an environment object. So what we're going to do is take this out of the categories view and use it in the tab bar view. Now that we are binding the restaurant value to an on receive, that's what we're going to use. So we make sure that we're getting a value from our app model. And if we do, we assign it programmatically to the path. So these are the views that we're going to programmatically push, just a restaurant. Okay, let's try now. So we have our categories view, everything is hidden. And let's try using the deep link now. And there we have a push to run Matsuit. We managed to programmatically push a view to a Swift UI navigation stack. Now, notice that this is an array, right? So for those of you that remember UI navigation controller, there was a method set view controllers where you could set an array of view controllers into the navigation. We can do that. So three restaurants, let's see what happens there. We have run mouse width, we go back, we have it again and again. So see this setting the path exactly like set view controllers. And it is animated, which is amazing. All thanks to path. Implementation, this is the iPhone implementation. We know to change how this looks in an iPad. That is our sidebar view. We're still using the old navigation view. We need to use the new component, and as you can see, this navigation link is going to be deprecated. Set this message here. So let's change to a navigation split view. Okay. So first thing is our sidebar. We're going to have this list. So let's just move this part. Then in our second closure, we'll have the content. This is our categories view or the profile which is just an upcoming mock view and then we have the detail 
So this is the restaurant view. For now, let's just change it like this. And we'll forget about this sheet. This is what we were using to present the restaurant when it was through deep link. But as we saw with the previous implementation, we already fixed that. And we are using the push to navigate to that presented. Same calls for the restaurant, but from the notification, we could fix it. We're not going to do it in this part. So let's leave this modifier. And yeah, same for this on receive. We're not going to touch the notification implementation. This was an old stuff thing. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much there for our navigation split view. Instead of just being before, where it was navigation view and three views in order, here we have a closure for each one. So here is the sidebar, then the content, and then the detail. Let's run and see how it looks. The content seems to be working. We have our restaurant. Let's open the sidebar. Here we have the profile. It's also working. Keep in mind again, it's through an old navigation link, but it's still working, even though it's deprecated. Let's see here for the restaurant. We can open this. And notice this is what we're getting here. Link search for navigation, this one the navigation stack. We get a bunch of warnings. We're not implementing what we need actually to present this here. Uh, in our sidebar, we used to have a drag and drop. We still have that. Let's tap on island grill. Nothing is happening here. So we need to fix that. So let's start by removing this warning we're getting here. So yes, we have at least in a section. Let's use the navigation link with a binding variable in our list. Where we have a selection. So selection for the selected destination. We already have a variable for that. Just this one. Now here, uh, we have a section, no problem for each. And here, instead of a navigation link destination, we're going to have one with value. So this has the item, which is this destination. And inside we still have the same label and item. So nothing different there. We are actually not changing the label. We like that part. The next, se the next section is with the favorites. And we have it for each with an insert. Nothing wrong there. I'll notice that we have an on top gesture here. Uh, let's deal with this later, but we could have one for selected favorite here, which we can use here. So let's first see our implementation looks like. Let's build and see if our warning goes away. And let's try adding this here. All good. Still don't have our favorite here, but it works. Now we have a navigation stack inside the categories view, so we actually need to change this since we are now using something different in the sidebar view. In the top bar view it worked, but we need something different. So what we're gonna interact with is our categories view model. We're gonna yes we can we have one here, same in the top bar view. But what we're gonna do is we are going to track the selected restaurant through our categories view model. So here we'll have a another published variable. Will be the selected restaurant. And in the categories view, instead of having this uh, on navigation destination, where is it? Here. We are going to use again the selection in the list. So, yes, this navigation link still adds the value to the restaurant, but we can add here the selection. And this will be in our view model. That will be the selected restaurant. And that's how it connects. The selection connects to this restaurant through the navigation link. And our implementation still works. On the tab view, we need to fix this since now our navigation stack has this path. So we're going to have a state object.
you, uh, sorry, category view model. And here we have an on receive, we need a publisher. So what's the publisher? It's gonna be view model done selected. Oh, sorry, it's the, actually the categories view model. And each time it changes, just like we did with the tip link, but changes in order for that path to navigate. Here we will add the uh, change for the selected restaurant. And we are to the path. And here I think we cannot have, yeah, we cannot have this. So, cannot be optional. So reminder, this is iOS 16. We don't need to uh, use uh, let restaurant equal restaurant. We can just use let restaurant and that's it. And we can add this here. And nothing should have changed with our iPhone implementation. Let's give this a quick test. All right, uh, since we're not specifying this anymore in the navigation stack, we need a navigation destination so that our navigation stack knows what to do with the restaurant that we are adding to the path. And there we have it, and we have a warning here. So now we have our iPhone implementation fixed again. Let's go back to the iPad and in our categories view model, we will do something similar. So we'll have the on receive. And instead of the path, we'll just modify the selected list. Now it's favorite, let's change that. And here in the detail, the selected restaurant and if it's nail then the empty restaurant and let's try this let's test favorites works real try putting another one no warnings Change it back to favorite, nice. Okay, we have everything working. We can work on is the column visibility. Uh, just a disclaimer, there's more to be done here because this would be ready to ship, but we're not gonna do it because it would just be repeating. The favorites view still has a navigation destination. We'll need to change this implementation just like we did for the categories view where we have a binding variable for the selected restaurant, but we're not gonna do that right now. So in our sidebar view, we can play with uh, showing the column visibility. Right now, we go to our uh, simulator. When we select a restaurant here, we're still occupying too much space. So we're still showing the sidebar. What we want to do is when we select a restaurant from the categories, not from the favorites, but from the categories, we want this to slide over to the left and to hide this uh, sidebar. So oh, we can do that here with the column visibility. This is a navigation split view visibility binding variable. I want to control it through the state here. Now we're going to start in, oh, we want to start expanding. And when we select one from our categories, for that we have this on receive, we add the selected restaurant, 
and we change the column visibility to double column. So here we have the explanation, we increase the space. So we want the content and the detail of the three column navigation split view. Let's see how this looks. So here we have this. We can still open it, nothing has been changed. We can slide it also. All good. Let's expand it, select Atlan Grill, nothing happens to the sidebar, good, let's select Atlan Grill, and it hides. Again, we can show it, no problem there. Mm, there we have it, that's navigation split view and navigation stack. Have fun with me testing the new navigation stack and navigation split view that we have in Swift UI for iOS 16. We finally have some of the navigation power that we had in UIKit in SwiftUI. You can control the path of the navigation, how many views you're presenting, the order, how to push them programmatically to a navigation stack. We even are controlling the deep link now with a better behavior than what we used to have. Now we can push it on the stack. On the iPad implementation, this part was missing because our sidebar view is not yet implementing the um, App view model with the receiving the deep link, but that's an easy change. It's just copy and pasting what we did for tab bar view. Hope you liked the video. Bye.